Uh, greetings and welcome to the Jenkins Documentation Office Hours. Uh, today is August 10th and this is the EU US edition. Uh, today we have myself and Mark Waite. Uh, Bruno is uh, taking some PTO, so he won't be with us this week. And uh, if anyone else joins up while we're uh, discussing things, we'll welcome them in. Today for the agenda, uh, notes about uh, just the, the one blog post we had published last week was our July newsletter. Uh, the weekly 2.418 release and upcoming 2.414.1 release. Uh, notes on the Google Summer of Code and where things are going there. Uh, updates and the progress made there. Um, the topic of potentially moving some documentation to make it um, more easily accessible in terms of uh, finding it and housing it. Uh, a couple pull, open pull requests of interest. Uh, and then uh, this is a discussion that we've been having now for uh, some time. Mark's proposed uh, the proposal for how we go about supporting Java 11, 17, and 21 going forward. Uh, the DevOps World Tour. And uh, Mark is going to be out of office for, for some time. Uh, and then I'll be out of office at the end of August. So we'll discuss those once we get there. Uh, and yeah, so Mark, just to make sure, anything else to add to the agenda or does that cover everything for us today? Nothing else for me. That's, that's more than enough. Okay, great. So starting us off, so the, the Jenkins July newsletter was published on August 2nd. You know what the deal is at this point. Our monthly newsletter, we got it out uh, really early this time around, which is great. Uh, new success and yeah, just all of our uh, wins from July and all the updates that we have for you from the SIG leaders. Uh, weekly 2.418 was released earlier this week. There were some issues in the uh, build, but we got it got straightened out and released no problem. Uh, so that is available. Uh, LTS 2.414.1, the new baseline is going is set to be released on August 23rd. Uh, the release candidate was uh, is available as of yesterday. So download test, et cetera. Uh, the changelog and upgrade guide have been created and a pull request has been submitted for that. Uh, something to note is that uh, the upgrade guide uh, is being adjusted still. Um, there are a couple of issues uh, specifically with uh, the calendar view or the global build stats plugin um, and a couple of other items that are uh, still in the process of being worked through. So. Uh, there are, for the most part, it is ready to go and ready to be reviewed, uh, but the upgrade guide may see some additional changes before it's, uh, before it's ready to merge. Yeah, so, um, so the, the story there is there are three cases where we're going to document that it's known that if you upgrade to this version with these plugins, you'll see, you'll see a bug. Mm -hmm. okay, great. Yeah, and uh, I actually just submitted an update for it, is essentially explaining that on for the global build stats plugin specifically, since that was a new one to add. So, yep. Uh, Google Summer of Code has been in full swing for some time now. The mid-term evaluations have passed. All four participants have passed, which is great. Uh, and so we've got the version documentation for Jenkins.io, aka building Jenkins.io with alternative tools uh, from Vandit. Vandit's going to demo that at the next UX SIG meeting, which is August 16th. And that's, and, uh, that's one that Christina Pizzagalli will be leading. Others are certainly encouraged to attend. Mm -hmm. Definitely. And I know I'll be there. So uh, yeah, we'll have we'll have representation and someone to ask Vandit some questions. Uh, speaking of questions. <laughs> Uh, these are some that have come up lately since uh, Vandit's got the demo site available and uh, looks really good. There are some things that obviously we can take and look at and discuss, such as uh, what versions are available for the documentation. Um, Mark stated the baseline seemed like a good idea. Meg uh, has agreed. I think that's a really good idea too. Um, the weeklies happen so often and so consistently uh, and if there's not necessarily change between, you know, uh, 2.416 to 2.417, uh, is it worth having uh, both of those versions separated and available like that? Or uh, is it, does it make more sense to have the the bigger releases be that that point of change and that point of 
okay, here's where we can de definitively say we're supporting something like Java 17 versus Java 11. So um, there's, yeah, I'm, I'm sure there's more nuance to it than something like that, but uh, there are other questions that have come up. So uh, is there a way to limit the number of releases displayed? Um, what kind of, uh, is there, uh, Meg's got a really good question that she asked about, is there a way to, to know that the, the, the information's changed on the page other than just looking at the version number um, or seeing, you know, what are the differences between the documentation and that might just require knowing what to look for at that point, uh, if there's not a dead giveaway, but um, just great questions to have and good things to think about as we're, as we're moving towards uh, the finish line here for Google Summer of Code. So uh, great discussions being had though. Uh, the Docker Compose for tutorials that uh, Ashtosh has been working on still has some more work to uh, be done, but looking good. The GitLab plugin modernization from Harsh. Uh, there's still some things that need to be tested and determined for that. Um, Mark, do you have any other uh, notes on that one or any other uh, insight nope. on that? Nope. Okay. Uh, and the plugin health score that Jagruti has been working on is still is uh, still moving forward. So great work there. Thanks to everyone for their constant work. Um, yep. Uh, like we mentioned, the midterm evaluations have been completed as of July. Uh, the final evaluations uh, that period opens on August 28th and closes September 4th. So uh, that time period at the end of the month there. And the final presentations for Google Summer of Code will happen in mid-September. Uh, there will be a uh, webinar or uh, some sort of presentation there. Um, That'll be recorded. That'll be available. Uh, more details come on that, though. Uh, the next item on the agenda is something that um, I actually just started uh, discussion discussion with Mark about. Um, there are documents and pages that exist in the Jenkins documentation uh, on Jenkins.io that are available in places like the installation guide, but don't necessarily have a proper home, so to speak, outside of that. So stuff like the support uh, policies and Java requirements, Java upgrade instructions. Um, these are things that are uh, inherently part of the installation guides. So uh, for instance, if we go to anything like Linux, um, the prerequisites have these links available. Uh, but beyond that, the only other way to find them is to search for them. So what I had proposed is potentially moving uh, the, the, the support policies and Java requirements into the system administration section, where we can create a separate section for the support policies. And uh, in my head, I thought they could work something like the reverse proxy configuration, where it does have a collapsible menu uh, for the various options there. We would have similar setup where it's support policies, and then it would drop down to reveal the Linux, the Windows, the server containers, et cetera. Uh, and then having a separate section for Java requirements or Java, just upgrading Java. But um, the other discussion there is, well, we're looking to have an upgrading Jenkins section. Wouldn't the Java upgrade fit really well there? Um, and so that's another, that would be a separate section from the system administration that we have set up though. Uh, Vandi, I wanna say had started working on that pre, um, a little while ago and uh, just needs some more work there to get that to a point where we can publish that. Um, but uh, outside of that, it's something that would be relatively easy and uh, wouldn't necessarily change anything about where everything is located currently. It would just give them a secondary home so that um, it's not necessarily, like people don't necessarily go to the installation guides after installing. Um, they may not find need for it or have use for the installation guides post installation and setup. Uh, so just making it easier to find would be uh, a win that we could get really, really easily. Um, this is an ongoing discussion. I'm not trying to do this immediately. Uh, just something that I have been thinking about as I'm working on stuff like change logs and other documentation um, that from an outside user, it could be uh, something that people in 
find really useful. So, um, by all means, any other ideas, comments, insights aside, like please share, feel free to share them here, post them in the Docs Gitter channel. Um, there's plenty of ways to communicate, so feel free. Uh, and then uh, for the open pull, re pull requests of interest, so um, we very recently had one uh, that Bruno had opened up, basically uh, using update CLI to update uh, tool versions in documentation throughout Jenkins.io. This has been uh, working incredibly well and uh, putting in a lot of work as it stands. Um, there have been tons of pull requests coming in uh, to update the tooling, ver the tool versions. So just like this one here, there's uh, still some, uh, there's, there can be, issues that need to be addressed or instances within the pull request where something might need to be adjusted or fine-tuned a little bit. But uh, just the mere fact that we're getting these updates and these pull requests created in, um, automatically is a huge win. And yeah. uh, Kevin, just, yeah, if you go, go back to that page and click the, the pull request tab yep. up at the top and then click closed, you'll see already at the very top, a recent mm -hmm. update that came in changing the Golang version. So none of us had to track that Golang had released a new version. Update mm -hmm. CLI did it for us. And yep. it it's current. So thanks very much to Bruno. And um, and this is using GitHub Actions, which is uh, something really nice and uh, new. So that's always fun to incorporate. Um, but yeah, this is something that Bruno created specifically for this. It's working like gangbusters. So yeah. Super, super thanks to him for all his work on that. Uh, and then the other pull request that we, open pull request that we have is uh, the administering Jenkins and Kubernetes pull request. Uh, we just need some review from people with Kubernetes ex expertise. But uh, yeah, we'll get we'll get that determined and get that result uh, reviewed and published when we have that. Uh, next on the agenda is the. Uh, proposal that Mark's created for job 11, 17, and 21 support and what our next steps are. Uh, and uh, I'll bring up the proposal, but uh, Mark, I know you wanted to speak to this and um, discuss some points on this. Yeah, so there's just one item here. It is that the okay. new, the second proposal in the job 11 section, the first says um, October 31, 2024 is end of life for job 11 and Jenkins. Uh, that had already gone out to to the board and to the officers. The third proposal there, end of life admin monitor, had already gone out to the board and the officers and been discussed originally. The middle one is is new, and it's saying, when do we when do we declare that Jenkins will no longer support Java eleven at all? And and for me, my proposal was let's make it the as close to the Java 11 end of life as we can without going beyond the Java 11 end of life. And so that means uh, August 7, 2024 LTS release is would be the last Jenkins version to support Java 11. So roughly a year from now. Nice. I mean, that makes sense to me. And that would be, that would give roughly two months prior to that LTS release that would require 17, if I'm understanding correct, Mark? Or well, yeah, and people can transition to 17 now, right? So yeah. they they we're we're giving we will start warning them in oct in a weekly in October and then in the LTS in December that mm -hmm. Java 11 is going away. And right. Java 11 will then go away with it will no longer be supported in the September uh, September 4 LTS release. Mm -hmm. So okay. the forgive the numbers, they're, they're declared approximately because we can't predict what number will be selected as the LTS baseline. Of course, no worries there. Um, that sounds that sounds great to me. I mean, that makes sense. And yeah, uh, the idea is to line up with the end of life and make sure that we're not going over, like you said. So makes total sense. Yeah. Uh, and 
Yeah, and the, I mean, the idea is just that we're, we have a plan laid out for how we're going to support Java going forward for Jenkins overall, but whatever the version might be at mm -hmm. that point. So, um, yeah, all right, cool. Thank you very much, Mark. Thanks. Uh, next up, so for the DevOps World Tour, so again, this year, DevOps World is happening in a different capacity, in a different way. Uh, it's going to be a multitude of dates and cities that we have listed here. Uh, DevOps World is going to be multiple dates. Um, some of them have a couple days for it, such as the September and October events. Um, but others, such as Chicago and Singapore, are only going to have one day uh, dedicated to it. Uh, the idea is that it will be more mobile, more accessible for more people, as opposed to having it hunkered down in one location for a few days. This gives uh, folks the ability that, or gives folks that might not have the ability to travel the ability to actually get to DevOps world for, uh, for a change and, and uh, in person as opposed to virtually. Uh, so yeah, so the, uh, the goal is the same, the idea is the same, everything's the same, it's just the execution's a little different this year. Uh, and Mark's actually going to be speaking at the New York, Chicago, and Santa Clara dates. So that's very, very exciting. Uh, and then uh, Olivia Lamy will be speaking at the Singapore uh, date, and Tim Jacome will be speaking at the London date. And I got that right this time because I got it wrong last week. So uh, <laughs> yeah, just a great chance to learn more, get in, um, you know, acclimated to the DevOps world, and a chance to just connect and meet some folks that may not have been able to prior. Uh, this yeah is a great networking event. It's a great event just in general to come out and see what DevOps has to offer. So yeah, uh, registration is open right now. Uh, the website has all for a lot of further details and um, information, uh, and they actually also have a list of uh, the talks and speakers and everything that's going to be happening. So uh, by all means, check that out for more information and yeah, get a better feel for what's going to be coming up. Uh, finally, on the agenda, so a uh, couple of housekeeping notes. So Mark's going to be out of office next week. So uh, the I'm taking it the August 18th meeting has just been canceled at this point, Mark. Uh, I or, I think I already canceled it. So yeah, if you want it back, I'll have to. Oh no, I did not cancel it. I take it back. I'm wrong. Okay. I okay. I'm definitely canceling the August 18 meeting, the one that is Asia office hours. Mm -hmm. uh, but the this meeting can certainly continue. Mm -hmm. um, so office eight or eight August eighteen office Asia office hours is canceled. This yeah. meeting August seventeen, no problem if it goes ahead. That's up to you. Yeah, I and mean, it'll be happening, no problem there. Yeah, uh, you U.S. Uh, docs office hours going to be happening as normal, so no worries there. Okay. Um, and then this was actually something that I uh, just came up the other day, but uh, I'll be out of office on August thirty first. Um, so, uh, would, um, would you be able to host docs office hours at day mark or would sure. it, you okay. bet I can do that. Okay, great. Thank you very, very much. Okay, great. Perfect. So then we don't have to do any other adjusting to the schedule. Perfect. Great. Um, so that covers the agenda that I have. I had for us today. Uh, is there anything else you want to discuss or talk about, Mark, while we're here on the call? No, nothing else for me. Okay. Uh, in that case, I'll uh, we'll go ahead and wrap up for the day. We'll give some time back to everyone. Uh, thank you so much for, as always, for joining. Uh, recording will be available twenty four to forty eight hours. Uh, and yeah, take care. Have a great rest of your day. Enjoy your week. Thanks. Bye.